Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hype Hop, and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the brand new Godox ML60 Continuous LED Light. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos just like this. Hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Drop a like in this video if it's helped you in any way. Leave a comment down in the comment section your thoughts or if you have any questions about the brand new Godox ML60. Follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. So I've got with me the brand new Godox ML60 in the retail packaging here. So you can see that's the carton. Has a few features that are listed on the front here. So this ML60 is a 60 watt continuous LED light, but the difference between this and previous Godox models, including the SL60, is that this is a portable battery operated continuous light, which is great. Now some features just really quickly before jumping into it include this particular light has special effects. There's also a silent mode, which means that you can turn off the fan at, at a certain uh, intensity level. And you have, it's compact and portable because it's a really small size. It has 2.4 gigahertz wireless remote transmission and it has brightness adjustment and also lithium ion and AC power supply compatible. So now let's jump into the box and see what's included. So here we have it. That's the entire package there. And firstly, the great thing about this is that it actually includes a carry case, which a lot of Godox lights don't include. Uh, only usually their flash models, so like the higher end flash models. So it's great that, to see that they've included that with this particular light. Now having a look at the bag, you can see there's some straps here. So just some carry handle straps. They also have some D rings on the side here for the shoulder strap, which should be inside. It has some Velcro straps on the top here. And what this is for is for a stand. So if you have a light stand, depending on the size of it, of course, you can feed that through here. So you can actually carry this entire thing in one unit, which is why the handles are a little bit longer there. It gives you enough clearance for a stand. And on the front here, you've got two zippers that open the main compartment, but also a single zipper here that opens a side compartment and you can feed, you know, some extra batteries in there or, or whatever accessories. Now jumping in to the actual packaging here, you've got two buckle straps here that hold this flap into place, which is great. And there's also a zipper compartment here that has some mesh with the shoulder strap. So that's that shoulder strap there. Now, a few things. Firstly, we've got the manual and the Godox warranty card. Got a bit of foam here. And you've got the light itself. So there we have it. That's the ML60. It's actually really small, tiny and compact. And it's amazing to see that they've actually managed to pack all that power into this one little unit. And it looks really good sort of, uh, you know, hefty and, and good design. So that's great. A few other accessories. We've got a battery plate here. So this is a battery plate that supports the NPF series batteries by Sony. So the L series batteries. And it's got a little clip here on the back. We've got the AC adapter and the power cable. We've also got some little straps here. So this strap here is a quick release. So it snaps into place just like that. So the strap's actually used to mount to a light stand and it holds up the power adapter. So that power adapter can get fastened to that strap there so that there's enough slack there towards the light, depending on how, how large your stand is or if you're gonna be using the handheld component, you can use this here as a quick release to support the power pack. And you've got a couple of cables here. So these are DC cables. You've got a shorter version and a longer version and the handle. This handle is great. So it's also the light stand mount. You can see at the bottom here, it, it supports standard five, eight inch spigots. And you've got a handle comp component here with, as part of the entire bracket. And you have a little mounting plate here for the power pack. So that one there just mounts straight on just like that. So you can actually use this as a handheld light, which is great. Now, this is the new version of the handle. There are two versions out there. The first version, which was the pre-production version has a smaller knob at the front here. And what they've done is they've gone ahead and improved this knob here. So it's more of a handle and it's one of the pull to adjust ones. So you can tighten it. And if it's not in a good position, then you can pull and then adjust the, the position of the handle there. This also has on the top here, a little tilt head. That's sort of like a tripod quarter inch quick release. So you can use this screw here to release and tighten to the bottom of the ML60 light. 
Now this is a pretty sturdy handle and bracket and it's one that's new from Godox. They've never really released anything like this. And I can imagine that you'd probably be able to use this with other lights too. So some of the other Godox Widstro lights, maybe the 80, 80 uh, range. So like the 8300, etc. And the last thing that's in here is a little reflector. So this reflector looks like it's narrower than the standard 60 degree reflector, which is great. And it's a Godox mount. So this mount here is different to the other you know, standard Bowens mounts. This particular light, the ML60, including the 8300 Pro, have a Godox mount. And that means that it'll only support the Godox mount accessories. And Godox have released some of those accessories, including some soft boxes, snoots, and other things too. I've got the ML60 set up on a little desktop stand here. We get a lot of questions about this desktop stand. So if you wanted to know what stand this is, we'll leave a link down in the description below. It's the Spectrum 43 centimeter light stand. It's basically just a mini light stand. So we have larger stands also. It's the little desktop stand for that. Now, having a look at this setup on the table here, as well as all the accessories, a few things that I wanted to clarify. Firstly, was that some of these pre-production models of the ML60 and some reviews on YouTube right now actually have a remote control that they've shown or displayed in the video. As you can see here, there's no remote control whatsoever. So the remote control is not included. We've tested some of Godox's remote controls from previous LED models. So we've got the RC-A5, RC-A5 Mark II, and the new RC-A6. So the RC-A5 models, they actually don't work with the ML60. We've tested this. The RC-A6, which is the new one, will be compatible with the ML60. And unfortunately, it's not included in the package. You will have a look at the instruction manual. It's not included there. It's not shown anywhere. And also, Godox have released an unboxing video on their own YouTube channel and it's not shown there too. So that means the remote's not included and you have to buy it separately, which is a bit of a shame because that means you still have to go to the back of the unit here and actually dial in all your settings. Now, having a look at the stand, it's actually quite cool what they've done with this entire light. So this new bracket here, which is a handheld light stand bracket and all these little accessories, it's all the small things that Godox have done with this light, as well as that small design. You can see that comparison to my hand, it's really small. The whole thing, it's Godox, making one huge step in the right direction. So that means they're really starting to innovate. They're really starting to change some of the design elements. They're listening to their customers and they're uh, you know, improving the design of all their lights and units, which is really great to see. And on top of that, they're still maintaining that really you know, cost-effective price. And it means that entry level or even just amateur photographers, videographers, you know, really can get their gear sorted with Godox. So having a look at this, I've got this set up on the stand. It's a little quarter inch screw at the bottom there. And there's a matching quarter inch thread at the bottom of the ML60. The ML60 comes with a light protector at the front here. So all you need to do is just release the tab here and you can pull off this little light reflector and you can actually mount on the included reflector. There we go. So it's a streamlined design. You can see there, there's no sort of, you know, raised parts. It goes straight into that reflector, which is really great. And the entire light itself is, is really small and streamlined. Now, they have the battery plate here. This battery plate is cool because there's three different ways to mount it. Firstly, you've got a little stand that you can slide out at the bottom of it. It means you can stand it on a table there. So if you have a little desktop setup like this, you can use the stand. You also have a little clip at the back here. There's a little belt clip. So if you have something that you can clip it onto, you can do that. But of course, they've thought of the three mounting points here, these screws, these silver screws. They slide straight in to the battery plate, just like that. And actually locks into place. There's a little lock here at the top. And you can actually release that lock and slide it up to remove it. So it's secure. So it's not just sitting there, it's actually secure. And they've also given you two cables. One is a longer cable. So if you're gonna be using a light stand or a C stand, you can use that and plug it in and you can have the light a bit further away from the battery plate because the mounting point here is the DC input and then the DC input at the back. But if you have it on the handheld setup like this, you can use this shorter cable and plug that into the back of the light and into the battery plate there. Now, the included straps here, these included straps are for the power adapter. So if you're gonna be using mains with this, so you're not using this battery plate, we'll disconnect that. You can use these two straps to mount it to your light stand. So I'm gonna be mounting it on a small light stand here. So you just feed that through the light stand this way, and then you just tighten that to secure. It's probably best to have it on the thickest segment of the stand when you mount it, because you can see there's quite a lot of extra slack here from, from the Velcro strap. And then you slide in the power adapter into that strap there. And it's actually a quick release here. So that actually just slides into place there. And you can use that cable to attach it to the light and power it that way through mains. And obviously use the plug on the other end and plug it into a wall if you want to do that. So that's really cool. There's actually a little quick release button here 
lets you slide out that power adapter too. So that means it's not, you know, like lying on the ground, getting damaged, risk of disconnecting if someone trips over it or anything like that. You can have that connected to the light stand too. So all in all, the actual design of this light is, is really great and what they've thought of in terms of even just the cooling system. You can see the vents at the top here, the build quality is really good. And you've only got two buttons on the back here that control the different options, dimming, et cetera, as well as the on off button. So we'll go through the menu now. So just turning on the light and going through the menu, we've got this plugged into the battery plate at the moment. So operating by battery. So you can see here, this is the main screen. It shows you the group. It shows you the percentage of output and it also shows if wireless is on and what channel it's on too. Now, when you press down on the set button, you can actually press down on these dials, either of these dials, and also spin them to, to run through the different options and, and settings. Now, when you press down on the set dial, you can see that there's some options here and you can cycle through the options by just spinning the dial. You've got fan on and off, you've got wireless on or off, you've got effects, you've got channel and group, and you've also got wireless ID. So jumping into the first option, which is fan, now fan, you see is on at the moment and you can actually turn this off. So if you want to turn off the fan, which means it will be completely silent. When you jump back into the output here and you're controlling the dim, the max you can actually set is 50% there. So it won't let you go further than 50%. And you can see it's flashing that little indicator there, which is a fan and a little strike through that shows that there's no fan operating right now. And that's because you've set the fans off in the settings there. But if you turn it on and jump back in, you can see that little indicator is gone and you can now increase the intensity all the way up to 100%. And this is even via the battery here too. So we're, we plug this, in, this into the battery and you can still achieve 100% output. Now, jumping into the next setting, which is wireless, you can turn this on or off. And that's if you're gonna be really just using this as a single light source or if you just want wireless turned off completely. And next is the effects. The effects, there's a few different effects, eight in total. Firstly, you've got lightning, and that's lightning one, lightning two, and then lightning three. Next one here is fireworks. You've got fireworks two and fireworks three. You've got TV. You've got fault bulb too, so you can see FX8, and that's the last one. Or you can just have the effects off completely. And then the other three options here are just all related to the wireless operation of this light. So you've got channel and group. So typically, by default, it's set on channel one, group A, and ID off. But you can change this if you want to, uh, you know, just change it from the default settings. You've got all the way up to 32 channels and you've got 16 different groups too. So when you go down to group, you've got group A through to E, uh, through to F, and then you've got zero all the way through to nine as well. So that means you have 16 different groups there. And lastly is ID. ID is only used if you're wanting to really dial in what ID this particular unit of light is, and you can set the same IDs on other lights or you can set different IDs on them. And that's, if you're gonna be using a bunch of different 2.4 gigahertz wireless devices and you're wanting to set the ID to ensure that there's no interference whatsoever, because right now, your remote would have to be dialed into one A and as well as a nine ID to communicate with this light, which means that there's a lot less chance of interference when using the ID here too, but it's off by default. And that's pretty much it. So overall, it's a really easy light to use. You can obtain these settings through the remote control too, but I believe the RCA6 doesn't include the FX menu, which is something that you need to jump into and physically use the dials here at the back to jump into the FX menu if you wanted to do that for each individual light. Now operating the light, we've got two NPF batteries here. These are the larger capacity 970s. You can mount them onto the battery plate here. So these are just generic ones. You don't need any special type of NPF batteries to use. And when you mount them, you slide them into place and they click into place also. And you can press this button at the center here and actually is a little battery indicator. There's four green LED lights there. So you can check the capacity of your batteries before actually operating the light, which is good. Now we've got that plugged in and we're using that shorter cable there, mounted onto the handheld bracket and turning that on right away there. So you can see it's really simple to operate. And there's only really Two knobs here, so you've got the dimming knob, which goes to a true 0%, so the light's on right now. It's at 0% and the light's actually off, which is good. It goes up in 1% increments. So that's, you can really dial in your output and your intensity. So I'm just blasting that to the back of the wall here. Now that's different to the SL60, which is the previous model, because the SL60, the lowest intensity is at 10%. So starting at 1% all the way up to 100% and the light itself is actually quite bright. So you've got some basic effects on this on this light too, which is great. So some of the other lights, uh, some other LED lights, including Aperture's lights, they have far more effects. 
However, effects are sort of something that are a little bit of a novelty, depending if you'll be using them in your video shoots. They're, they're primarily used for film and video, so it's up to you if you're really gonna be using it. But overall, this light itself is only a 5,500 Kelvin light. It's got a CRI of 96, and, and it's got 60 watts of output, so that means you have quite a lot of output, as well as the effects all in the one model here in a portable streamlined design. So just a few more specs on the ML60. We've got 69,000 lux at half a meter, with the included reflector, so that's the output. We'll show some of those lux readings up on screen. We'll use our own lux meter as well as checking the CRI ratings. So also it has the wireless remote controls. And overall it comes in a neat package at 405 Australian dollars or approximately 269 US dollars. So you can see it's not too much of a jump from the SL60, which is roughly about $230 Australian. And if you're wanting to invest in a little bit more and grab the accessories. So you've got the, the bracket, you've got the battery plate, you've got that carry bag, all in a neat package that's compatible with batteries. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't included. So that means you need to purchase batteries separately if you wanna use this on location or if you wanna go wireless with it. Overall, it's still a really cost-effective solution for lighting. It's perfect for YouTubers. Godox have a wide range of modifiers to use with this Godox mount. They've also got this brand new softbox, which is the, called the AD-S60S and the S65S, and you've also got the S85S. So if you're wanting to use this as a lighting setup for YouTubing, or if you're wanting to do, um, you know, like run and gun setup, because you can use this as a handheld, if you've got an assistant to use it as a lighting source too, it's perfect for that. So for more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Drop a like in this video if it's helped you in any way. Feel free to leave down in the comment section below your thoughts or if you have any questions about the ML60. Follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.